And you know what? It's f***ing ugly. Sorry, Teresa. Okay. I don't like it. Wait a minute! That's not nice, Wait, Jennifer. Actually, that's actually not bad nice. manners. And I have bad manners. I own it. I don't even know Jennifer's brother. And she probably thought that, you know, we should give him the business. But I cleared it with her. She said she was going to chip him for the necklace. She didn't even say the word jewelry. I think it wasn't a text. It was a phone call, something about getting Teresa a gift. Would you want to chip in? I think I was with my kids. I was brushing her off. I was like, of course I'll chip in. But knowing that it was jewelry, it, it kind of hurt my feelings. Had she had told me we're going to get a beautiful custom-made necklace for her, I would have been like, oh my god, my brother's a jeweler. You know, do you want to try him out? You know, like, after it was understood that, like, of course we're not going to go to your brother when Margaret's jeweler lives, like, around the corner. Yeah, down the block. She called the necklace ugly. It's like, who does that? She's like a she child. She insulted the necklace. She made it about her. Do you regret saying the necklace is ugly? No, I don't regret saying it because in the heat of the moment, <laughs> I was so angry that I wanted to make a point. I told Teresa <laughs> afterwards I did not think it was ugly. That it was, was a beautiful so necklace. Fun. But I did want to make a point. And I thought that saying that the necklace was ugly was the best way to do it. Hence, we feed her tequila. <laughs> I wasn't so upset that they, that they didn't go to my brother to get the necklace. I was upset that they expected me to chip in when we could have given my brother the business. FYI, she never did chip in for the necklace. We never, I never got the money from her. I laid out the extra money. Fact. Old school traditions, my brother took over my dad's jewelry store, <laughs> and my brother is now the breadwinner for my parents. So if my brother is struggling financially or if the business is not doing well, my parents are gonna struggle, and that's an issue for me. I don't like how she made it about her. Like, yes, we were there to give Teresa a gift. You know, it was about Teresa yeah, being yes. strong and achieving her goal, and it was like, listen, this is about Teresa, and somehow we were talking about monkey's assholes. Looks like a monkey's asshole. And when she was coming at me with those lips, I couldn't help but say that they did. They looked like a monkey's I mean, at that point. That's disgusting to say about anybody. I mean, whether I like Jennifer or not, you don't say that about somebody. I said maybe because she's been done. I guess a monkey's asshole to know what a monkey's asshole looks like. That was a better way of putting it. I mean, a monkey see, monkey do. I mean, if you've been there, I guess she would know. The monkey shows its asshole when it's showing off. That's what monkeys do. How do you know that? Um, I've watched National Geographic. That's amazing. I, oh, I watched National Geographic, and that's what a monkey does. You're jealous of my juicy lips. And it just, <laughs> look, at that second, that's, that's what flashed in my face. So it just came out. I can't. It was crazy. But really, if you look, I mean, I feel bad, but when you look it up, it looks like that. This is up there. Like, yeah. this ranks in the, like, are we having this conversation? <laughs> like, I don't know if I wanted to laugh or cry <laughs> or scream. I was just like, what is happening right now? This go. This is, like, top. This is top. She stood amazing. up, and she said, you can suck these these monkey asshole lips. Something like that. I was like, ooh. It got very dramatic. Yeah. Pink and plump, so I'll take it, bitch. <laughs> it never looks so good. You know that Danielle's not gonna behave. No, she's going to behave because I'm gonna just ignore her if she doesn't behave. Marlene! Ah. Hello, sexy girl. Marlene, I'm going to Mexico. Wait, yes, yes. Is it, you know, some girls are not so nice to me. What can I call them in Spanish? How do you say bitch? <gasps> bitch? Yes. Playa. Playa. No, that's, Playa. that's beach. Not beach. <gasps> bitch, oh. you're a bitch. I don't say the bad words. Marlene, you always say the bad words. <laughs> really important question that we have to know the answer to. Did yes. you ever find out how to say bitch in Spanish? Oh, uh, no. How do you say How do you say bitch in Spanish? I don't know Anyone? how. Siri, how do you say bitch in Spanish? Terra. 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 So it's not beach, though. No, it's not beach. <laughs> no, what? beach. I would say, how do you say bitch in Spanish? That's right. Beach. Perro. That's so okay. funny. Yeah, beach. You're right. That was fine. Okay, uh, no, okay. I know how to say, Marlene says but I think that's enough. Like What's I think. What's What's Marlene always goes She's a That's what Marlene says about her. Sorry, Danielle. That's what Marlene says about you. It's sad to see 
what happened between you two. I'm not sure what happened at my wedding. It's just crazy to me. It, it was not overnight. It was gradual. It, it might look overnight to Teresa, but Teresa's, you know, Teresa's so super busy. She's always out and about. She doesn't see that. But that's Danielle getting in her head. I don't know, you know, Danielle saying to her, I don't know why she dumped me. Danielle knows why I don't want to be associated with her. Let's have a good time, though. We're here. Yeah. And that's what I'm saying. I can have a good time with Danielle. I could keep the peace with anybody. I was being super cordial. I knew it, you know, I knew it probably couldn't totally last. I could have held it together the, the entire trip if I had to have, but she's unpredictable. I think Danielle is vindictive. I mean, I don't know her as well as the rest of the crowd, but I think that she latches onto somebody and she tries to make them hers. And then when she's mad at you, she'll try to destroy you and bring you down. Yeah, like if she, if she, um could sway T Teresa and I both to kind of see her side more than see Margaret. She, she, that was definitely a goal. What's your reaction to Margaret saying Danielle turned Teresa against her? <laughs> I find that hilarious. Wait, Mar Margaret said that? I feel like she turned me against her because, you know, I feel like when you're friends with someone, you don't backstab them. And I feel like that's what she was doing to Danielle. And I just thought, Danielle being there for her when she needed her. And then I felt like when Danielle needed her, she wasn't there for her. I'm not into that. I'm not, I like, I like loyal, loyal people. Loyalty. And I feel like she wasn't being loyal to Danielle. I do feel like people need to be careful around Margaret. I don't think she's anything that she pretends to be. I mean, I really, I know for a fact she's not what she pretends to be. I love Teresa, but she's a very poor judge of character. So as long as you're nice to Teresa, she wants to be with you. But Teresa's not the one calling you every day. You have to call Teresa every day. You have to check in on Teresa. So Danielle is the type of girl who will call you every morning. She puts, you know, Danielle doesn't work. She doesn't have anything else going on. So Danielle's thing is every morning she's gonna text you. She's gonna, you know, make long, sure she checks emails. in. Long, text, long text, messages. text messages. So she will be up Teresa's ass nonstop. So of course Teresa feels, you know, Teresa feels bad. She thinks I d just dumped Danielle, but I, I don't really give a I could look at her across the table. She can't eat coconuts. She can't eat dairy. She can't eat gluten. And she will go home five pounds thinner than when she left. And you know, we'll have to carry her to the airport. <laughs> Danielle seems to have a lot of dietary restrictions that she brings up. <laughs> <laughs> like, I've been committed to, you know, nutrition. I've, some of it not by choice because I'm allergic to almost everything. I mean, I'm sure it's legit. I mean, I just think that it's one of her things where it's like, I'm coming in the room and everyone makes sure that the queen has what she needs. I would never, ever make, like, light of allergies because I know a lot of kids with food allergies and it's it's terrible and very scary. However, I think that some people tend to call things they don't like or maybe the things that don't agree with them as an allergy. So I just, I don't know. She seems to have an awful lot of things that are like butter, milk, every, like every single thing. I mean, but thing. if you look at her, she has a toothpick. Like she's a tiny little thing. So it makes sense that she's not eating any of these things well, when she's not around us. No, I'm She's sure not she's, eating butter ever. No, no, she's not. No, I believe she's not eating any of it for sure. Do I think she's allergic? Absolutely not. I mean, I was going, you know, off camera, I was going to a restaurant there. I don't want to go to that restaurant. I think they cut the, they use the knives to cut the cheese. I go, Danielle, what happens to you? Do you go into anaphylactic shock? No, I get a stomach ache. I mean, cut me off a break. That's called lactose intolerance. Take a lactate and call it a day. I mean, <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> I'm lactose intolerant. Yeah, I mean, seriously. It's so weird. Frank was right. Once I get on stage, that nervousness, it just went away. That was the most awkward moment of my life. And you know what the funniest thing my boys do? Like, you know, my, my boys are 11 and eight. And, and they were there and they watched her go up and you know, when she turns around and she bends over, they make fun of her. They're like, <laughs> they're still shocked. At her. They're like, Gia Teresa wakes up and she bends over and she's like this. <laughs> oh man, it's the most. <laughs> I'll never forget that to the day I die. Really but let me tell you something, I'm, I'm, I'm so proud of her. Frank, how proud were you of Will Frankie and his show? Oh my God. Mm. I, I competed back in the day and um, 
I had no problem. That day, when my son, I, I had pains in my stomach. It's, they're talking about nervous. Oh my God, it, it was horrible. He did fantastic. He was horrible. Yeah, he, he did, thank you. He, he, he did, I, he, I can't explain it in words, I'll be honest with you. Oh, snap. Can we check out this Judice booty? <laughs> yes. Teresa, what do you think Joe's gonna say when he sees that? I don't know. I guess we'll have after he sees it, I'll let oh, you know. No. She'll just ask we, for we crossed that bridge with it. I, I think that Joe will be cool with it because he's known Frank forever and it's like a doctor. It's like a doctor Innocent. working. Yes, it's his yes. Job. Jennifer. It's very yes. professional. Exactly. I, I've seen Frank oil many women over the years. It's so funny because at, at our gym, Frank has to have naked, basically naked women in front of him. And he's like pinching their totally perfect ass. And he's like, no, you gotta take some off here. Frankie's online looking at his coin collection. And you know, this is normal in our house. At one time Frank called me, he goes, I have like four fitness models in, in my f***ing office and your son is showing them their, your, his coin collection. What did you raise? <laughs> Excuse me. Look at this. <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> I, I would. I would definitely. I missed my calling. Stripper, bodybuilder, stripper. Yeah, bodybuilder. I was. I, yeah, I I'm was, still gone with the whole stripper thing. I was good too. For girls or for guys? I would have done whatever. <laughs> oh my god. Well, they paid me, baby. Oh my goodness. You'd have a better chance of me, you, and Jan going out to eat than Jan and Brett. Joe. Was true. Sometimes I think Joe might be okay if I had the typical ex-husband, ex-wife relationship, you know, where you don't really like each other, you don't hang out. Jan and I are amazing co-parents and very close. Yeah, I know. I'd have to admit to some extent I get bothered by Jan. Who's Jan? Jan's, Jan is Margaret's ex-husband. Jan's like having a crazy uncle. And he'll always be there, he's my family. I grew up with Jan. I was with him since I was 24 years old. So Joe probably, you know, he probably thinks it's just like, all right, Marge, you know, it's like I'm married to you and Jan. Just be honest. I mean, He's, come on. Uh, it, it's hard balls. to describe. He thinks who he was. He he manhandled her, her around. He locked her in closets. If I had known about that when we initially met, I, I would have just, I'd beat him to a pulp. If, if anybody did that to Melissa and I saw it, I'd beat that guy to a pulp too. And, and I can't put up with it. Joe might not be the most productive. Joe? I want my house in order. All my stuff is right here. I live in the middle of it. But he is the most sensitive one. So I could tell him anything. Margaret kind of said, like, you're one of her girlfriends. She can talk to you about anything. That's because, actually, um, so we're... I think that's awesome, bro. We, well, thank you, but we I got... So, no. no. See, I think that's great. I think that they're, they're best friends. They can well, talk about it. you could be best friends, but you don't want to be like one of the girls. Well, because... All right, what are you going to do next? I'm time? at my house. My, house my whole house yeah, is... He called you a pussy. I know. A I'll son. box you anytime you want. <laughs> I'm a lover. <laughs> Not a fighter. <laughs> <laughs> Joe, he called you a pussy. Joe. I know, he's a dick. <laughs> you going to let him call you a well, pussy? He was going around cheating, so... Oh, oh, now, now you're going to jump on a bandwagon. See, now we're going to get on his bandwagon. you got to let him call you a pussy. Like, come on, bro. I don't care. It's because we... We got married, both of us, late in life. We'd gone through life and all the experiences. And we are like best friends. We became friends before, before we, we started dating. I was like best friends with her already. So I know every intimate detail about how she thinks and how, about her life, and she knows the same as mine. And we discuss every single thing that happened during the day. So on a daily basis, Marge is a very effervescent girl. So. Nonsense happens all the time. I don't mind it, you know. She knows my life, I know her life. 